We're speaking from the Wolf Clan Teaching Lodge, located on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation. It's about 25 miles from Buffalo, New York, following the lake known as Lake Erie. The Cattaraugus Reservation is one of the two reservations where the Senecas live. The other reservation is Allegheny. We're going to be talking about the things that we do at the Wolf Clan Teaching Lodge. The Wolf Clan of the Senecas is, is the clan that are known as the Trailblazers. These wolves, years and years ago, had been teaching the ancient Senecas how to live in harmony with nature and how to walk with all the other creatures on this great earth plane. This earth plane to our people was called Turtle Island. For seven generations, the, this particular family have been teaching the wisdom, prophecy, and philosophy of the Senecas. This has been handed down by word of mouth, or as we know today as oral tradition. In this oral tradition were songs, dances, legends, stories, and experiences of our ancestors. The important thing is to help people understand our connection to our Earth Mother and how we should honor all the creatures of this Earth. Perhaps the most important thought is that all people, all creatures, all manifestations on this earth belong to one universal family. In other words, we are one body, one heart, one mind, and one spirit. All things are equal. Human beings have no dominion over any of the other creatures on this earth. In fact, human beings could not exist if it were not for all the other creatures. This is a great interrelationship, and we love it because we are part of this great whole. We cannot in any way be separated from it. It happens that the voice that you are hearing belongs to Yuanode, meaning she's whose voice rides on the winds. The voice is an echo, echoing the wisdom, prophecy, and philosophy of our people. I believe that at this time it would be appropriate to speak about how all things began as we understand it at the Wolf Clan Teaching Lodge. There are many, many ideas where all things began, and who really knows whether they are right or whether they are wrong. 
but we like to look at things since they are here and we can see them that there was at some time a beginning place our children would ask questions that the elders who were the teachers couldn't often answer and the elders being very creative people would answer the best way they could. Perhaps the first question was, who am I? The second might have been, where did I come from? And the third, what are my purposes in this life? And the fourth, how will I be remembered after I'm gone. To answer the first question, who am I? There is a story connected with this. Many long years ago, before there was time, place, or even human beings, there was a great mystery in eternal space. This great mystery had a great mind, a great heart, a great spirit. But we do not know what kind of a body this great mystery had. So the ancient people said that they saw the body of the great mystery in everything that they tasted, they touched, they breathed, they saw, they listened to, or they smelled. All these things were part of this great mystery. It happened that the story continues. The great mystery created all things and also created a place of great beauty. And all these things that were created were placed in this place of great beauty. It happened that all these creations were also gifts of great beauty. And the great mystery endowed them with sound, sight, taste, touch, emotion, awareness. And also endowed these manifestations with faith, love, intuition, will, creativity, magnetism, and gratitude. All these manifestations were grateful for these gifts. But it happened that the great mystery realized that all these things that had been created were only receivers in order that there might be givers as well as receivers. The great mystery divided all these creations into male and female so that they could be givers as well as receivers through exchanging and, and sharing their gifts with others. This worked out so well, the male and the female, giving and receiving and receiving and giving, that these creations decided that it was so much fun 
that maybe they should be giving if they were males to males and receiving from males. And the female thought this works so well, we will do the same. And the Creator was so happy that these creations were sharing so much within each other. As time went on, the creations were growing. They were reaching out through their sound, through their sight, through their scent, through their tasting, and through their touching. Then a great gift was received, that of feeling. And this feeling came through emotion. And after receiving this great gift of feeling, they became aware of a truth. And this was the greatest gift, to learn the truth. The great mystery had all these creations sharing and giving with each other. And it was a beautiful world. It happened that with this growing and growing and growing, these creations began to get larger and larger. And the great mystery decided another gift must be received. And this gift was time. After time was born, things could be measured into their growth patterns. There is a legend that has been told and passed down through the Wolf Clan that all the creatures originally lived in the water and they received all the nourishment they needed to grow from the great mystery. And before time was born, these creations were growing and growing into enormous sizes. And the water became so filled that there was scarcely space for all these creatures to live. So they began to push above the water and they came into a place where it was cold because the water kept them warm. And these first creations were the stones and the rocks and the land that pushed up into mountains and the rocks that pushed up high, high into these cold places. And then the Creator made another beautiful manifestation that were clouds, we call them. And they floated up over the high mountains and the hills. And this became another great gift of beauty. There were some small creatures that we would like to focus our thoughts upon. When they pushed out of the water, their skin was cold and they shivered 
and when they tried to get back into the water, there was no place for them. So they huddled together, wondering what next to do. They looked up into the sky and they saw these nice, warm, fluffy clouds. And they thought, let's cover ourselves with those warm looking clouds. The next thing they did was start to climb the hills. And then they looked at the mountains and they began to climb higher and higher. Finally, they came to the place where the clouds were living and it was colder than ever and these creatures shivered with pain. Presently, they heard a voice and the voice said, eat the seeds in the clouds and see what happens. So these creatures began to eat the seeds in the clouds. And presently, their skins began to sprout feathers. They were so overjoyed that they jumped up and down. And as they jumped, they went down and down into the place where they had first come from. And when their other friends were standing there and saw the strange coats that these creatures were wearing, they asked, where did you get those coats? And they said, from the clouds up above those great hills and the rocks. And they said, we want some too. How do we get these feathers? And the creatures showed how overjoyed they were. And they began to jump up and down. And as they jumped up and down, they found that they could land into these high plants that we call trees. Follow us, they said and we'll show you how we receive these feather coats. There was a long stream of these cold creatures following the feathered ones up to the high mountains. And they told them to eat the seeds. And sure enough, they sprouted feathers. And they had such a beautiful time and they were so nice and warm. And they began to practice their jumping up and down and found that they could land with their, their feathers, that they could land in the high trees. And then finally they could jump from one tree to another. And this was a beautiful, beautiful life that they were leaving. There were still some of those creatures down where they came from the water. And they were very, very cold. And they were waiting for the feathered friends to come down and show them how they too could get coats. But the feathered friends forgot about their brothers and sisters who were suffering with cold. Finally, two very, very old feathered, unfeathered creatures reached the place where the clouds were. And they said, you have forgotten us. And there are others down there who are cold. Please have enough love for us 
to bring the clouds to us or whatever can happen to make us warm. And one of the feathered creatures said, maybe we can do something about that. And that moment, a voice spoke out and said, get on top of the clouds. And when the cloud becomes heavy, it will move down to where the other creatures are. So all the feathered creatures jumped on the clouds, and sure enough, the cloud began to move down, and down and down until it reached the bottom of the mountains. And all the creatures were waiting for this wonderful happening to occur. Promptly, they began to eat the seeds from the clouds. And when the seeds were all eaten, the cloud had disappeared. From that day on, these feathered creatures were called birds. And we know that they came from the water because they still have scales on their legs and their feet. This story has a wonderful lesson connected within its meaning. First of all, we know that these were our ancestors. And to this day, we want our spirit to fly high and free. Also, we are always looking for places where we can live and keep warm. Another lesson from this is that because these birds were our ancestors and because they had free spirits, we too want to soar high into the heavens above all the mountains, above all the clouds, to have wishes that we may someday achieve. And the wishes help us to grow into what we want to be. So it's the ancestors, our bird ancestors, that we are so grateful for having taught us how to keep warm, how to have concern for others, how to jump up and down and laugh with joy, and how to become one with all others believing that all is for one and one is for all. Danny Hope.